There is no army mighty enough to stop the march of an idea whose time has come. Today, I'm going to talk about two such ideas whose time has come. Good morning and welcome, everyone. I'm DJ, and I'm delighted to be here with all of you. So many familiar faces. I'm equally grateful to have this opportunity this morning to be the voice for many of you in the audience who have worked extremely hard to move these ideas forward. Truly, it's a sign of a vibrant and a dynamic community, a thriving community, that can take ideas from inception to execution. All of us, as a part of Open Compute Project, is one such community. With over 300 members and growing, we represent the entire value chain of data center industry. Among us, we have silicon vendors, we have system builders, we have solution providers, and we have data center operators. Together, we have contributed over 280 contributions in OCP. We have taken countless journeys together in open, collaborative fashion across many different stakeholders. Journey of sustainability is one such journey, which started roughly around two years back when the idea was first proposed to the incubation committee. Few of us got together, and that December, we voted on 14 different ideas. Sustainability was voted number one, with support from many of you in the audience who voted. And then in 2021, the group came together and started working on this initiative. The group started looking at many different areas, such as circularity, life cycle assessment, uh, carbon emission, metrics and measurements, and even life cycle assessment. They started contributing with a lot of data into the Open Compute project and also socialized across 11 other projects on all the things they were trying to do with sustainability. And these projects themselves took this idea enthusiastically and started working on their own ways. In fact, you heard from Zane at Intel this morning on modularity, which is one such idea which was being pushed for developing circular designs. This enthusiasm, contagious enthusiasm, can be explained from many different perspectives. The perspective which I find simplest, easiest to understand, and resonates with me most is the perspective of data center energy usage. If you look at the data center energy usage over 20 years since OCP was conceived, the growth is phenomenal. We are ex expecting 15 times the levels of 2010 by end of this decade. The worst case models put it at 40 times. If you look at the share of the data center energy consumed, for the global energy, we started at around 1, 1.5%, 1 and we are expected to finish this decade perhaps in double digit. It's phenomenal. Now, the energy growth in data center may not be a surprise to many of us. We are aware of this. Again, we heard in the keynotes this morning. What is interesting to me is that energy actually is a proxy for two aspects. Operational footprint, of course, because that's what we are calculating. But it's also proxy for manufactured equipment. In fact, the equipment has to be manufactured first upstream and then gets deployed downstream and operationalized, and that's where you're measuring the energy. Both of these aspects have impact. Both of these aspects contribute to the greenhouse gas emission and carbon footprint for the data center. 
greenhouse gas protocol sex and accounting standard which many of the OCP companies follow to report their carbon footprint and greenhouse gas emission. The greenhouse gas protocol classifies the emissions in three categories. Scope one, which is related to the direct emission. Scope two, which is related to indirect emission as a result of purchase of the energy. And scope three, which is related to the supply chain emission. All these three are considered when an organizational footprint is reported. In case of data centers, scope two and scope three are the dominant ones. Manufacturing equipment related emissions would fall under scope three, and data center operations, the energy consumed, would fall under scope two. The interesting thing which recent study has found is that when you look at the energy provided by the traditional grid, the scope two dominates as a part of the total emission of a data center. This is not a surprise, actually. It's kind of intuitive and obvious uh, you know, uh, observation. But the interesting thing is when you look at it from the grid with renewables, the bottleneck flips dramatically. Now the scope two emission is reduced substantially because your energy sources are from renewables and scope three becomes the dominant uh, uh, contributor to the life cycle of data centers. More recent studies have revised these numbers even more. The interesting thing for me is not what the exact number is. What is interesting to me is that there's a flip. You go from scope two as a dominant one to scope three as a dominant one. As I mentioned, we have over 300 members here representing the entire value chain of data center industry. Together, it's our responsibility to address this bottleneck. Many of the OCP leading technology companies have already announced science-based targets to be achieved by the end of this decade. Mere eight years away. How are we going to do that without addressing this bottleneck? We have to put the right structure within OCP, and it's with great pleasure I want to announce that we are now adding sustainability as the 12th project, joining the 11 other projects within OCP. I find an interesting coincidence here. It's a very pleasing coincidence that OCP is in the 12th year of operation, and this is the 12th project joining the list of projects. Now, this gives us a common umbrella to bring all the ideas, expertise, knowledge, exchange to allow us to move forward to address this bottleneck. The second announcement I want to make is around OCP tenants. When OCP started in 2011, it started with four tenets we all are very familiar with. Openness is in our core. We work to improve efficiency. We work to have an impact. And we also deliver scalability. Today, we are adding the fifth tenant to the pantheon of the tenant. And sustainability becomes the fifth guiding North Star which is going to be there for us whenever we are thinking of contributions starting in 2023. Again, a structure determines behavior. Putting these two structures is going to help us, guide us in direction to achieve the goals which we want to. So we have taken some journey together. We have gone somewhere. We have arrived at some place. However, the path continues to higher ground through the clouds, and there's more work to be done. As we say at Meta, the journey is only one person done. Over the last two years, as I talked to many passionate individuals within the community, there were a couple of challenges which actually resonated deeply with me, and I would like to share some of them with you today. I call them big, hairy, audacious goals in front of us. The first, we have to look at embodied carbon in silicon. 
Silicon powers everything within our data center, whether it's compute, whether it's networking, whether it's storage, or even AI ML. If we have to understand the carbon footprint of the data center, we must understand the embodied carbon in silicon. Second, I mentioned circularity. The group delivered design for circularity within OCP. Technically, these are very complex challenges to create designs which are circular, which can extend life cycle. But in my opinion, the harder challenge is the business challenge. Trying to find right business models which can push circularity forward is even harder. And this requires, again, all of us within value chain to work together to create these new business models which can index on circularity first. Third, and my favorite, is going beyond PUE. Power usage efficiency has driven our data center designs for last 10, 12 uh, years. However, I want to share a small story here. Growing up in India in a middle class family, every time I would leave my room with lights on, fan on, my father would magically appear and yell at me to turn the lights off. And it happened every time. He was always interested in improving the PUE of our household. He didn't care about sustainability. He didn't care about being green. All he cared about was his pocketbook. He just wanted to save money on electricity bill. Efficiency is a common sense. It's part of OCP tenant from day one. We have to go think beyond our efficiency. If we have to think of green data centers, you have to bring green measures into your calculations. Like John Doe said in his famous book, measure what matters. And all three things we have to do with full transparency because there is data exchange which is required across the value chain players. And we have to look at things collectively which requires transparency. So what's my call to action as I conclude my remarks here today? First, we are all here together. Please engage and try to learn about all the activities happening on the sustainability side. Participate in the project. And the simplest thing you can do is we have a mixer tomorrow between 11 and 1. Please come join and meet your fellow travelers. Second, contribute with your time, your thoughts, your expertise. Sustainability is such a cross-functional field. It requires everybody's input, and everybody has something to offer. Third, as you learn ideas from here, please take them back into your organization. Talk to your leadership. Talk to your peers. Try to evangelize. Empowering Open is the theme of this conference. What does empowering open mean to me? It means we have to be transparent in all of our interactions. We have to be open and transparent, and that is something which is important, especially for this topic. And last, and my favorite, is you got to have fun. If you're not having fun, if you're not building new friendships, relationships, then you're not doing it right. So as I wind down here, um, I have had opportunity to talk to many passionate, thoughtful individuals within this community. They have shared their ideas, their inputs, their thoughts as I prepared my remarks this morning. I want to thank all of them. And you know who you are for your time and your inputs. And lastly, I want to thank all of you in this audience for your time and attention. And I wish all of you a phenomenal rest of the Open Compute Summit. Thank you.